Okay, guys, welcome. Um, kind of a different team call today. Usually we have other coaches on the call, but today we are lucky enough to have Kevin from corporate join us with his very professional gray background there. We're all sitting in random spots at our house, but, <laughs> but he has a lovely professional gray background. And Kevin is my corporate mentor. We haven't known each other that long. He's relatively new to Beachbody, but we had a really great first conversation and he offered to come on the team call and I asked you guys, hey, would you like to share from corporate and pretty much everyone was like yeah I'm in so um, I'll, I'm recording this so if you have to step away or whatever no worries guys I totally get it thank you so much for um, coming I know it's an odd time but you know corporate works regular nine to five hours so I'm really excited and I'm going to let Kevin take it away Thank you very much, Jillian. Guys, I, I really am very excited to be on this call with you. Team calls by far, by far and away, are my favorite calls to do because I get to see so many coaches. I get to see you guys face to face. I mean, it's, it's great talking to Jillian. I'm, great, I'm grateful for uh, her reaching out and for it. We have gotten to know each other, and it's a wonderful thing. But I love doing team calls. I love seeing you guys in your houses. I love seeing you guys with your kids. Uh, yelling at them and telling them to be quiet. I'm trying to listen. All that stuff is great because that's that's beach body coaches. That's who we are, and so it's awesome. So I, I totally get it. If you guys need to step away, no problem at all. Uh, make dinner. I know this is kind of a funky time, but I do appreciate you guys coming out, and uh, and and hopefully we can get some uh, things squared away as far as what we can do to reach out to more people and what we can do. To it's not. It's right it, now. What what accent is it off of? Uh, what we can do to help coaches who are on our team. I would love to get you to know you guys more on a personal basis, but unfortunately, we can't do that with right now. So I'm just going to assume that most of you uh, have been with Beachbody for uh, a little while, hopefully longer than me. I've only been with Beachbody now three months. Uh, I've been in the network marketing industry for eleven and a half years uh, with with a different company love the network marketing industry and I love Beachbody. Let me tell you what brought me to Beachbody guys was the coaches, you guys. It is the purest, Beachbody is the purest form of network marketing because most of my guess is that most of you didn't sign up with Beachbody with the intention of making a million dollars. You signed up because you saw somebody post something about a program or nutrition or something that sparked your interest you became interested, you signed up, you had your own transformation, whether that's a, a physical transformation, emotional, mental, spiritual, whatever the transformation is, you've had this transformation, and then people organically, naturally, are attracted to you because you're posting your transformations online. That is how network marketing is supposed to be, and that's what attracted me to Beachbody. Um, I, I uh, graduated in exercise science, so I'm a huge proponent of exercise and all things related to health um, and, and so being coaches in the you know today we were on a call with Carl I don't know how I was lucky enough to be on a call with Carl the team the sales team was and he says look in the purest form I gotta make sure I say this right um, let's see with coaching oh yeah to in the, the definition of coach is this I'm gonna help you do something that you couldn't do before or something you weren't very good at that's what a coach does. In, in, in the sports term, that's what a coach does. Look, you want to get better at any sport or any, any instrument or whatever? My job is to help you do that. That's what a coach is. That's who you guys are. People come to you with goals, and you say, yeah, yeah, I can help you with that. And I'm going to make sure that I'm aware, I'm aware of you now. I'm going to help you along your journey because I'm a coach. That's what I do. I help people transform who they who who they are, and I'm willing to put time and 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 in, in effort into you, as long as you're willing to do it as well. And so that's what attracted me to Beachbody. I'm so grateful to to be here on these calls. Um, but it does require work. And so what I'm going to do is on this team call, if you're kind of like this and you're saying, "Look, Kevin, impress me." Hold on to your hats because I'm going to make sure everybody is involved on this team call. I need you to get paper. I need you to get a pen or something to write with. There you go, Jillian. That's what I'm talking about. If you have, or even a phone, uh, I need you to write stuff down. This is going to be a very interactive call, and I want people participating. I want, 
Um, those on the phone, you're going to have to chime in if I because I can't see you. But everybody else, please uh, raise your hand, or I'm going to call on you uh, for for responses. But I do want this to be a very interactive call, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I hope this works um, the way I want it to. So hold on to your hats here. Share screen. Share screen. Share screen. Okay, can you guys see this okay? I can see three of you. Thumbs up? Yes? Okay, oh, yeah, awesome. So what I'm going to talk about is how to do business like a boss. And, you know, maybe, you know, the whole girl boss thing is kind of going around right now, but this is not just an industry for, for women. I think males have a very strong presence in here. I'm glad to see there's some guys on the call as well. Uh, thanks for being here. So we're going to learn how to do business like a boss. Doesn't matter where you are at in your um, progression, in your, in your journey through with Beachbody, but we're going to learn how to do business like a boss. So by a raise of hands, and I'm going to scroll through and make sure everybody is involved here. How many of you have worked and have had a boss? Somebody you reported to. Good. I'm glad we all raised it. So um, we're going to talk about some of the bosses that we had. Like I said, um, I need you involved. So I pull out your paper now, pull out your pen, so pull out your pen, pull out your phone, something to write down because I'm going I'm to ask you guys to write stuff down. So thinking about the bosses you've had in the past, I want you guys to think of two different bosses. One that was fun to work for, and one that maybe wasn't very fun to work for. What I want you to do now is write down on your piece of paper, first of all, what the boss that you love working for, what made it fun. And I, I'm just gonna, dead time's okay. I don't need anybody to talk right now. Maybe 15, 20 seconds. Just write down, what did you love about this boss? I'll have you write it down. Some of the qualities about this boss, their personality, their habits. Give you guys maybe about 10 more seconds to think about what made this boss so fun to work for. Okay, good. Uh, Jillian, you, you can pipe in and, ch and chime in and give your responses, but by no means should you be the first or only one. So um, please unmute yourself and I just, let's take, let's do about, I don't know, five to 10 responses. Go ahead and unmute yourself and tell me what made your boss fun to work for, please. I don't have names next to me. One's raising your hand, go ahead, just unmute yourself, just go ahead. Say it again. Katie, I just unmuted you, if you couldn't unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. Uh, they gave us clear expectations. They laughed with us, not at us, um, or didn't laugh at all. Um, or, and then positive feedback when we did well. Awesome. Somebody else? I wrote, made me feel equal, and listen to how I felt about things while I was doing them. <laughs> Love it. Hey, somebody else. Um, I wrote um, that she was engaging. She took time to get to know me. Um, and she was very collaborative in the way that she worked and set realistic expectations. I like that a lot. I hey, wrote, keep going. I, who was that? Keep going. Oh, I wrote, um, they taught me new things about making me feel stupid that I didn't know them to begin with. And they were like normal. I mean, uh, I don't sounds weird but they they weren't like they didn't act like they were so cool just because they were a boss yeah they weren't above you yeah i love it okay let's do one more can you hear me yeah oh um i wrote down one boss was accepting to learning new things even though they were the boss but they weren't like making it known fact about it so 
Perfect. Perfect. I hope you guys are writing some of these things down that uh, if you um, heard something, you're like, oh yeah, uh, my, I love the boss that did that too. I hope you guys are writing these things down. Okay, very good. Now, let's talk about, oh, we did, we did not one for it. Oops, sorry. Let's, let's switch it to what made them not fun to work for. So if you guys can switch that, so get all the good vibes, feel good about yourself. Now let's talk about the boss that was not fun to work for. So if you could, we'll take it once again, 30 seconds, write down these qualities, habits, personality traits, whatever, uh, about the boss that was no fun to work for. I like honey. <laughs> okay, ten more seconds. All right, so once again, uh, if you haven't chimed in, uh, please chime in, uh, but go ahead and unmute yourself. Let's talk about the boss that was no fun to work for. What are, what are some of the things that was not fun about them? Can you hear me? Yep. Um, my not fun boss was a jerk. He had unrealistic expectations. He put me on the spot. He was accusatory and more like a big brother figure, like watching me all the time. <laughs> Yeah. Perfect. Somebody else. Um, I had a boss who was impossible to please. Um, he was unclear on his deliverables and mm -hmm. he was poor at uh, giving constructive feedback. Good. Okay, let's keep going. I really pointed out everything I did wrong and it always made me feel really small. <laughs> I wrote that he was incompetent, um, he had no leadership, and he was not confident in his own decisions. Hmm. And then the minute tough things, things got tough, he always threw us under the bus rather than going up to bat for us. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I work for someone who was like Jekyll and Hyde, like one day, one personality, the next day, different. Um, and they were not clear at all on what they, what they wanted. I like that. Not consistent. Yeah. Good answer. I'm currently in that situation. <laughs> unorganized, all over the place with their ideas. Um, gets real offended if you point out something, you know, going by the book and they didn't know that instead of saying, oh, thank you. Um, doesn't like follow up. So try to put all the workload on one person to make it easy. Okay. Yeah, great answer. Anybody else? Anybody else want to get this off your chest? They didn't treat you as an employee. I mean, they just treated you as a, you know, just a, somebody just they walked upon. Mm. Cool. Perfect. I don't know if I did. I jump ahead? Okay, so the, that, that was the bad one. Okay. So, Okay, everybody, take a deep breath. Oh. The bad vibes. We don't, we're done talking about the, the bad boss here. Let me give you my story on a boss I loved working for and a boss that I did not like working for. I'll go with the good one first. So the boss that I really enjoyed working for, the reason why I enjoyed working for them is because they were invested, he was invested in me. Uh, I had just came come out of a, a call center job. I had I didn't know anything else besides call center, and so I moved to a different department. And he was so willing to work with me. He understood that I didn't have the background I, I needed to to work in there. So he helped me along the way. He 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 made me um, do stuff, but he didn't. He did it in a good way. Uh, and then on downtime, he got to know me on a personal level. Um, one of the things that we bonded uh, around, it was kind of funny, is we both love taking care of our lawns. 
Uh, I love having those straight 45 degree angles, making sure that uh, when neighbors pass by, they, they wow as they say wow as they pass by my lawn. And the same thing with him. And so we were able to bond over something totally not work related. And it was such a good thing to do to the point where, you know, when he had his, his dog passed away, we reached out to him and we brought him cookies and we, we taught, sat and talked with him because he was so, he cared so much about me that just by default, I started caring about his life and the stuff he was doing. Um, and at, at work, um, he made sure that he promoted me when there was time for raises that he reached out and, 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 um, and helped me so that we could get raises. Such a, a great boss. And then the boss that I didn't enjoy really working for was somebody who, and these are all the exact same traits, made sure that he was always one level above us. If we came up with a good idea, to the point where he would almost shoot it down, and then he would take that idea, make it his own, and, and so that he would present it to his boss uh, in a way where, what you, well, that was our idea. I mean, I don't care who, where it comes from, but it doesn't have to be your sole idea. And this is the guy who, who pushed numbers. Um, and if you didn't hit numbers, it was not, I mean, we, we like to the point where we've canceled team parties because we didn't hit numbers. Uh, and he didn't really get to know us on a, on a personal level. A funny story is you guys know those, those caramel apples that they sell. They're kind of the, the, the fancy uh, ones. I feel bad talking about sweets on a beach body call. Anyways, um, the, the caramel apple that had all the chocolate on it and it had drizzle and it was, it was a really good caramel apple. They're kind of expensive for an apple. And we went and we got one uh, as a team and came back to the office and I had mine sitting there and they, they were cut into slices. Then he just walked by, grabbed one, ate it and walked away. <laughs> okay. All right. Obviously we're not getting along very well. Um, thanks for asking if you could have one or not. Uh, but these are qualities that, that, make it wasn't a very fun boss uh, to work for. And so I want to make sure that we, you guys have your list as well, because I've written down everything. I want to make sure you guys have your list as well so we can refer to it. So for the good boss, a good boss has clear expectations. A boss that gets along with us, that gives positive feedback, um, that where you feel equal to them, they're not above you, uh, they praise you for the good things you do. They're engaging. They got to know me on a personal level. They have realistic expectations. They taught me new things when I didn't know. Uh, they weren't above me, and they were willing to learn new things they didn't know. That's a great trait. I'm, these are all good things you guys talked about. Now, for the not fun boss, I hope you're writing some of these things down. Complete opposites. Unrealistic expectations always on top of me when I didn't hit my goals. Impossible to please. Poor at giving feedback. Um, always made me feel small, not confident in their decisions, threw us under the bus, split personality, not consistent, not organized, and did not treat me like an employee. So where am I getting out with all of this? Um, employees, guys, to, for them to stick around in a business and they have certain things have to happen and the same thing is i'm everything relates back to beach body and the beach body business for you guys to find your team and to keep people on your team and your downline certain things need to happen you can't just say hey thanks for joining the team i need you to hit sc5 right now for me okay i mean that that just isn't that's just now what happens and going back to what I was talking about in the beginning my guess is you didn't sign up with Beachbody to do the business you signed up to change your life and you're okay helping people change their life and making money on the side but it, it can't I mean we, we didn't sign up saying yes I'm gonna do about this like, like a job but eventually it needs to happen so for people to stick around and be on your team and for employees to stick around at, at any corporate America, certain things need to happen. And I hope you guys take notes on these. There are eight things that I came that were that I got this from somebody else that they came up with on what it takes to have people stick around in your business. Um, and if you need to move the the videos around so you can see all 
well, and you can do that too. So the number one thing, guys, is they need to be paid well. Uh, I think of any corporate job. For you to stick around, you need to be paid. The same thing needs to happen with your beach body business and for your, their, your downline and new people, they need to be paid well. And they need to be paid fairly quickly. They need to see success fairly quickly um, because th that, that's what drives a lot of people. And I'm not saying money is the only thing that, that, that does here. I mean, we're changing the world. We're helping end, end the trend of obesity. But people need to see a financial gain. Uh, I feel bad kind of promoting this because of, of the language, but if you guys follow Trey Bearer at all, he did a video just recently where, you know, there's the guy dancing all by himself and he was on the hill and he's the only one dancing and eventually somebody else joins him dancing and they look like buffoons and they dance for them by themselves for a while and for a long time nobody joins them but they keep dancing and then eventually more and more people come on and that's what kind of how network marketing works if you're looking for a a plus b equals c that's not what's going to happen here at beach body it's a lot of variables but you do eventually start making money and for your team to stick around they need to see those financial gains so that's number one they need to be paid well but it doesn't have there's no time frame they just need to know that that they're going to make a lot of money or, or money or cover whatever uh, associated with their why. Number two, they have to be mentored. Guys, there's no college classes out there on how to be a network marketer. There's no college classes on how to properly invite or how to um, reach out on social media. Those are things they need to learn while being a coach. And that's our, your guys' job as their upline is to mentor them, to reach out and say, hey, I'm here with you. I'm, I didn't know much along the, uh, the beginning either, but I'm going to help you along the way. Like I said at the beginning, we can't just assume that they're going to take off and, and run. Granted, those people do exist, but they're in the minority. What needs to happen is these people need to re be mentored. They need to see that they can do this with help. So always reach out that, that extending arm to those who are willing to work um, and those who want to be mentored. Uh, you guys do know more than they do. You may feel inadequate. You may think, Jillian, we're all relying on you. She can't do it all, guys. Each of you sign up people. Each of you can reach out and mentor other people. But for an employee or for a Beachbody coach to stick around, they have to be mentored. These are one of the things that you guys wrote down on your good things is they were able to mentor you. Third thing, and this is great timing uh, for the year for this, they have to be challenged. Guys, if this were, were easy, uh, Everybody would do it. Everybody would be happy. And for the first little while here at Beachbody, guys, we—I mean, we were a rocket ship. We were just, everybody was flying off the charts financially with with volume or whatever. And then now that now that things are the slope is actually starting to um, appear rather than straight up, it's actually starting to slope a little bit. This is where challenges happen, and they need to be challenged. If you guys were at a um, I, I feel bad putting any any job out there because people, jobs are great. But, you know, if you're at a, a job where you just sat there all day and you didn't use your brain, I don't know how long you stick around, right? It's one of the things where, like, oh, my gosh, this is the most boring, unproductive job in the world. I'm sure we've all I've, – I've had one before. And, and then people quit because they weren't challenged. They won't say that, but it's because they weren't challenged. They need to be challenged. They need to say, hey, look, there's your goal. And here are the steps you're going to take to reach that goal. I'm going back to the mentor thing. I'm going to help you so you can reach those goals. But they need to be challenged. They need to set goals, and then they need to take those goals up another notch. One of the things that I love doing with my coaches is, okay, let's set goals. And they set the goals. And they go, okay, let's set another goal just on top of that. Let's actually challenge yourself because most people set goals that are attainable. That's great, but we need a goal that challenges you. And by challenging you, you become a better coach. You become stronger. It's, just, it's with exercise. The only reason we get slimmer, more tone, buff, whatever, whatever it is, is because we challenge our body. We, we force it to work hard and we sweat, but we love the results. It's the same thing with, with planting a tree. You know, it has to great, get roots. And if we're watering this tree constantly so that the tree doesn't require the roots to go down, there, here comes a storm, that tree is going to knock over so fast. 
the tree needs to grow. We need to water it every so often, but we need to withhold some of the water as well so that the roots can grow deep, so that when these tough times come, the tree is not going anywhere. It's okay to be challenged. It's okay to feel like times are rough. That's actually, as here at corporate, we are welcoming these times with open arms because we feel when the dust settles, coaches are going to come out better. We're not asking anybody to quit. We love you right where you are. And if you feel like you're, you're not doing well, it's okay. This, it's, it's time to set new goals. It's time to be challenged. It's time to set yourself up and say, look, look yourself right in the mirror and say, look, I'm, I'm going to do this today. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to sell one challenge pack today. I'm going to do it. Or I'm going to reach out to 20 people. I'm going to get no's. I'm going to get 20 no's before I, I get a yes. And that's okay. Um, it just employees need to be challenged <clears throat> next one is employees and beach body coaches need to be promoted and we are kind of in a, in a, in a fun industry because these promotions can happen the the effort they put in uh, they there are results associated with that it's not like you're at a corporate job where you put in all this time and effort and your boss doesn't see it so you never get promoted here you put in time and effort it, it, eventually you will get promoted uh, but it's good to see you progress. So many times the coaches, so I work with the three to five coaches. So many times the coaches I work with say, man, my diamond keeps falling in and out. Well, diamond is not their end goal. And if you guys are working towards diamond, you should be working towards uh, two diamond. You guys should be working towards three star. You guys should be working towards five star diamond. You guys, these are your, your goals need to be out there so that you can promote yourself higher and higher and higher. We need to, it's being, being promoted to diamond is not the end goal. Let's keep working at it. Let's keep saying, look, I am, I'm a five-star diamond. I, you tell yourself every single day, I'm a five-star diamond. I'm a five-star diamond. Eventually, it will happen because that is where your goals are so associated with. So, uh, so we're four down. Let's go four more to go. The next thing employees need to be uh, do to stick around and same with beach body coaches they need to feel involved and one of the things that we talked about this guys the boss that was not fun to work for because they didn't listen to my ideas and this is such a great industry because we do things like this we're on a team call we're all over the united states but we're invested in one goal and that is helping end the trend of obesity and changing people's lives and so we do need your involvement. Uh, I did a team call the other uh, week for, for a coach. And it was so funny because they, it wasn't on this topic. It was a different topic. And honestly, guys, they were like this the whole time. And, they, and the, person, the only person talking was the one that um, was hosting the team call. Nobody else was chiming in. Nobody else was speaking up. And it was a, a good realization and to, to her and to me going, look, you're, hold, you're hand holding way too much. You're taking charge. You need, you have some awesome people on your team. You have some awesome coaches who have their own experiences and their own ideas. They need, they need, they want to share these ideas. And so instead of um, talking the entire time, gather ideas and get these people involved. You know, when new coaches sign up, they're so timid. Uh, you know, my, me myself, three months on the job, I'm very reserve uh on, on sharing my opinions because i'm like oh my gosh there's there's employees who've been around here for years but i i have something to say and i have i have value that i can add and so make sure that your teams are actively involved in uh building the business one of the best tips i can give for this guys is, is this when you do team calls try to talk the least amount of it. and what i mean by that is one of the best things that you can do is assign a topic out to somebody and have them teach that on the team call. It's somebody who, who's reserved. Talk to them on a one-on-one, -on -one, get help them, mentor them, challenge them, get them involved on a topic they, that they can present to the rest of the team. And just by presenting the topic, they feel so much better. And then after they present, praise them for it. Recognize them for it. Get them involved in your guys' teams, in your team calls, on your team meetings, um, rather than taking it all by yourself. Uh, I'm talking to everybody here on your calls, talking to Jillian, talking. You guys get people involved. 
Uh, the next one, being appreciated. This, I'm so glad, guys, that the fourth uh, vital behavior is recognition because everybody loves to be recognized. Now, how they're recognized is, it can vary from person to person. Uh, I know about the, the five love languages. I know about the color code. Somebody mentioned to me the gems. I don't know that one, but apparently there's those, they're out there. Um, but people love to be appreciated. People love to be recognized. And it can be so simple. It can be as simple as a Facebook shout out on the team page. Just seeing their name in front of a lot of people. They feel so proud, they feel awesome. It could be sending them a small gift. It could be um, uh, praising them for uh, on uh, like a Facebook Live. It could be sending them a cute little handwritten note. Um, any of these things are so cheap, but they mean so much. And if, if, if a coach on your team is putting in a lot of time and effort and you don't recognize them and you don't appreciate them, they're gone. They need to feel appreciated. Uh, so one of those things, it's so easy to do, just do it. Okay, almost done, guys. Second to last one, they, employees and coaches need to feel like they are on a mission. What better mission out there, guys, is there than helping people fulfill their goals and while, you know, ending the trend of obesity. I know I keep saying that, but there are so many people out there who – who want to do better, who, I mean, there's a Netflix, if you guys are Netflix, there are so many documentaries now on the food that we eat and, and, and everything like that and on exercise. And we are on that mission. We are, we are I can't think of a better reason to, to help somebody uh, than, than by changing their lives. And they need to feel like they're part of this mission. Uh, going back to the involvement, they need to feel like they are helping somebody out. And, when you guys, you know, you sold your first challenge pack or you saw somebody have the transformation, how, may, how did it make that you feel? Like, oh my gosh, this person can now play with their kids. This person is now off uh, whatever medication. Beach body doesn't cure anything or any disease, I have to say that. But, um, like, we're on a mission to help people. And they, because they feel like that, they want to stick around. What a great thing. And the last thing, guys is they need to feel trusted. They need to feel like, if I fall, you're gonna catch me. Coaches need to feel that. Coaches need to feel that, um, that their opinion is valid and that, um, that what they have to say is worthwhile. And you as a, as a coach, they trust you as a coach. And so I hope you're not going out there saying, look, this is a get rich, uh, scheme. I know we, I, we you would never do that, but um, you know, one in my previous job, I worked with some people in Japan. Um, the the company was global, and one of the in Japan was just flourishing, flourishing above any other country. And so I asked the the Japanese staff. I said, "What what are you guys doing to make business flourish like this?" And they said, "In the Japanese culture." They don't share anything with anybody else unless they've tried it and it worked for them. If it did those two things, if they did those two things and they saw results, they were then willing to share that with, with their family and friends. And those family and friends trusted that person that it would work for them. Rather than just shotgun approach of, hey, who wants to lose weight? Who wants to feel better? And then uh, going out there, it was a, such a personal relationship-based thing and the i don't know if you guys know the japanese culture is such an amazing culture um they wouldn't share it unless it worked for them and so that i i love that that we we need to have a transformation ourselves. and one of the best things i can say to you guys right now is if you're not doing personal development if you're not drinking your shakeology if you're not working out get on board now so many of us have our initial transformation and then we get so invested in the business side of things that we pull back from the transformation. Carl today on, his, on his, our phone call, he said, guys, coaches need to go through a second or third or fourth transformation. They get so invested and then they, they, they pull out and they start talking, they start doing their business and they start talking to the coaches about how they need to do more business but they themselves, they're not reading a book. 
they're not they're not doing their their workouts they're not drinking their shakeology they're not doing their invites and it's such a simple thing that we can turn around and we can do those things jeremy red was talking to one of the top 10 coaches and this top 10 coach was going through the same growing pains that everybody is experiencing right now. And she was pulling her hair out going, what in the world is happening? Where am I doing wrong? And so Jeremy sat down with her and said, ask the important questions. What book are you reading right now? What workout are you doing right now? And she said, I'm not. You called me on the carpet. You caught me. And so together they put together her and her husband put together a plan, and all she did was focus on herself. And then just by default, she started sharing. She came, became more excited about wanting to share the opportunity because she was going through her whatever and transformation, she started getting excited. And then her team latched onto that. They saw that she was doing better. They saw her going through the transformation, so they started doing things. And just last week, she re responded back to Jeremy and said, look, I'm back in my sweet spot. I'm there. I'm back. My team is doing well. I'm seeing results. And it's simply because they're doing their, the four vitals. They're doing this transformation. Guys, I, I know you guys are, are wanting this super impressive thing for me. And you're saying, look, impress me. It comes down to what you want out of this and what you're willing to do. This is a job. This is something where you have to put in time, effort. You, you can't just sit there and hope that your team's going to carry you. You have to treat this like a job. You have to go out there and say, look, I'm going to talk to somebody today and, and, and I'm going to, whether it's through Facebook, Facebook or in, in person, and say, I'm going to sell a challenge pack today and I'm going to go and I'm going to get all the no's I can just so that I can get that. Um, it does require effort. It does require time. But I promise you guys, it is worth it. Um, and so I'll kind of end like with this. Be the leader people look up to because you make them better. Going back to the boss that we talked about, I hope you guys wrote down all the good qualities of a boss. And I want you to be that boss. I want you to be that coach to your downline. I want you guys to have clear expectations to your downline. I want you guys to give positive feedback. I want you guys, I want your downline to feel like they're equal with you. I want you to praise them. I want you to be engaging. I want you to get to know your coaches on a personal basis. Um, I want you to teach them new things. I want you to reach out and not, don't feel like you're, the, the, you're above them and that you're willing to learn new things and that you're the boss that people love. And, you know, I, I keep saying boss, but you're the coach, the leader, the upline that people look up to. And rather than going out going, look, guys, this month has sucked. And I need you to, to pick it up. And I want you to hit SC this month. Nobody likes to hear that. No, that does not inspire anybody at all. What does inspire is, hey, look, let's go change lives. And I'm going to do this with you. I'm, we're going to do this together. And we're going to go help other people because we have something that works. We have over 450,000 coaches involved in this who have started to see transformations. This stuff works. And we need to let people know that it works and that it requires time, effort. It requires a transformation. But I'm willing to do it with you because I'm that kind of person. I'm that kind of boss. I'm that kind of coach. And I'm willing to reach out and help whoever's willing to, to work with me. So anyways, uh, I think that's the end of my, my slideshow. I would love to get, uh, and just, I, I don't know how long these, your team calls go, but I would love to get um, feedback uh, on, on what you guys, your takeaways are, and maybe we can get a small conversation. So um, Jillian, I'll let you call out a few people um, to kind of give their takeaways and what maybe, before you do that, I'll say this. If you go away from today's call and, and nothing happens, something, something's not right. Every call, guys, every team call, every, from this point on, when you guys finish a call, I hope you take two minutes and write down what is my action plan. What, because of what I learned today, what am I going to do now to change my business? Because if you do business as usual, you're going to get the same results. You have to do business as unusual. Something needs to change. You know, Kim Carver, one of the things that he, he says to, on his, his trainings is, your business 
is exactly where it needs to be with the effort you're putting into it right now. If you want your business to grow, you got to put in more effort, more time. Um, you got to, something needs to change. And so let's, let's talk, Joe, and I'll, I'll turn it over to you, to you now, but let's talk about some of the takeaways um, of what is going to happen now uh, after this training. Yeah, so if anyone has any questions or someone wants to speak, let me know. If not, or unmute yourself. If not, I can totally call people out. I really liked, um, for me personally, what you said about, you know, changing lives and working as a team and not like just telling people you have to hit success club. I actually started something this month for the entire team, which I posted about a few times. And I don't really know if I, I have the right number of people's lives I want to change because we're doing something a little bit different, but we're trying to change 200 lives in July. And it's one life per success club point, one life per program alone sold, and one life per home direct that goes out that didn't, you know, doesn't count for success club because it, it was purchased a previous month. But I'm trying to like, you know, help people. I think success club is important. And I think that, but I think there's other elements we don't track as much. So I want people to see like those elements too. So that's what we're working on this month. Like I said, I have no idea if 200 is a good goal because we've never done it before. Um, the only challenge is people have to track it on their own. So I loved, I love that part because that's really my goal for people to see like, you know, you don't, challenge packs are great, but they don't have to be. And like, you know, keeping people on home direct is valuable. And sometimes if someone purchases a program alone because they don't get Shakeology, I guarantee you 90% of the time they're coming back to purchase Shakeology, you know? So don't, don't get discouraged by that. So I really like that and awesome. definitely trying that this month. Um, so does anyone have anything they want to share? If not, I'm going to call someone out. I guess I have a question. I know, sorry, I always talk. Um, my, I think that you're absolutely right with the number one first thing is that the whole paid well concept. And I find that that's a little difficult with once we bring a coach on, there's so much training that needs to happen right away. Um, so there's like the, the basic orientation, but then there's like, oh, we have an internship or, or there's the self pace and there's a, there's a lot to making this business work. And what tips can we, I don't know, maybe start where we're trying I have so many discount coaches on my, my team. Um, and I would love for them to get a taste of the paid process. Yeah. Be great, like, oh. great question. Yeah. So w one of the things that we're pushing here at corporate is, is, you know, having this funnel of everybody who's purchased a challenge pack or they're trying to college or they're trying to program and they haven't gone through this transformation yet. And, and it's kind of like a, a baking process where, um, you know, we have all the ingredients to make this awesome, delicious chocolate chip cookie. And so we put them in the oven with this transformation start, starts to happen. And then we realize like, oh man, I really want to go to this Billy Idol concert at summit or whatever, or whatever the case may be. So we pull the cookies out of the oven half baked and we say, Hey, look, can you hurry and go give me some points? Uh, because I'm really just trying to hit this thing. And these coaches come out and they're not, ready to to go and and so just after a couple months they lose interest and they're done they say man i suck at this when in reality they don't suck but they they haven't found that that win and so what i'm getting at here is these coaches need to have that transformation they need to see that people are interested in their results and by going through this 30 60 90 i mean 90 days is ideal 90 day transformation period and then people start coming up to them and saying, oh my gosh, you look so amazing. What are you doing? It's at that point, money starts coming in. They can see those quick wins because now they're starting the coaching opportunity because they have a story to tell. They're out there sharing their story with other people. Whereas if you come out half baked and you haven't fully been transformed and you try, try doing this, people aren't going to come to you as fast. And they're not going to start, they're not going to, you're not going to see those quick wins. You're not going to see those financial gains because you're not done baking yet. And you're not, you're not there ready to share your transformation story. But these people who have gone through the transformation, 21 day fix, three times in a row are ready to share. And because they're ready to share, 
they're going to start making, earning those quick wins because people will start saying, yeah, whatever you're doing, I'm on it. And I'm going to, and so they'll start seeing those and they can start covering psychology or whatever. Uh, so I hope, hopefully that helped. Katie, did you listen to the national wake up call this week? No, it wasn't on replay yet. Um, okay. I think it was replayed earlier this morning. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. It I, wasn't on yesterday because I think it might get, Yes, is due to the delay of the holiday, but. Oh, anyway. Okay, well, I dialed into the replay Tuesday and I got it, so I don't know. But she did a really good job of talking about, like, if your discount coaches are in challenge groups and you're teaching them, you're, you're t treating them as customers, she did a really good job of talking about how she sort of teaches them to be coaches without telling them she's teaching them to be coaches, like um, posting on their wall about their program, like something they did that day and seeing people respond positively, but not obviously trying to sell anything, you know? I like that a lot. All right, Jillian, here's what I'm gonna do for you. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go through everybody and I want you guys to take, give me one takeaway of what you're going to do to improve your business after this call, all right? Uh, I, I don't, I'm just going to go off of your Zoom call name. So, Bruce, I'm going to have you go first. What is something that you're going to do this week or this month to improve your business? <clears throat> well, I'm going to continue. I just started my personal development. I haven't been doing that. And I started uh, reading a book today. I talked about it with a, a couple people in there already. And so I'm continuing to do that. I do my psychology and my exercise every day. And I've got to get better at inviting people into uh, groups and things like that. That's the thing I'm going to work on and try awesome. that. Work on yourself, Bruce. Work on yourself. Get your story. I want you to have a strong story. Uh, I want you to go out there. When you invite people, if you just say, hey, can you do this? They're going to say no. You need to give them a reason to say yes. You need to uh, be that person. Have a killer transformation story. And then by doing so, people would naturally be attracted to you. I'm just going to chime in really fast because Bruce has like the most amazing transformation story pretty much okay. ever. He was asked to talk at Tampa Super Saturday with Lindsay Matway about his story. There you go. He's like, he, I, it's on my website. He's amazing. Um, I, I feel like if you like, if you, once you get more comfortable with this, Bruce, as soon as you start talking about people are going to be like, what are you doing? I mean, like off diabetes meds, like we're talking insane. So you should be really proud of yourself. Thank you, thank you for clarifying that. Awesome, Bruce. Thank you. All right. McCline 22. <laughs> I think she's on mute. Hold on. Hold on. Your there you go. Are you off mute? Yeah, yeah I am. Okay. Okay, so just like Bruce, I have to do PD every day. Um, I actually just started driving, so I'm going to get a book that I can listen to in the car cool. and listen to that everywhere I go, so that way I get it in. Um, I also need to start inviting people. I'm really bad at messaging, so I just need to start kind of getting out there more and becoming more comfortable. Yep. All right, that's what it is. You just got to do it. And the only way to become comfortable is just by doing it. And I love, I love the personal development. You know, one thing um, that kind of is a, a silly, stupid statement, but it makes sense is, look, if you're going to inspire people, you have to be inspired yourself. And personal development is where you get that inspiration. Thanks for sharing. All right. Uh, Allison Federico. Yeah, that's it. Um, what I'm going to start doing, I think, is like a 90-day transformation period group kind of thing for my new coach is not really a group but like a plan so that they start working towards it I kind of got caught up on how does a new coach bring in new money or bring in money fast at the beginning like that's, mm. that's really hard mm. so I think I'm going to start doing that to help them see like a timeline of this is where I'm going I'm not just right here Amen. Yeah, I love that idea. You know, one of the best things you guys could do is when a new coach signs up, they see themselves and they see you. And that gap is so wide in their mind. And when in reality, guys, that gap is this small. They just don't know that yet. And so your job is to help them see that, look, the difference between you and me, I do something. I invite people. I do my psychology. I do my personal development. And then by doing so, we're going to be together. So I love that. I love that idea. Thank you. All right, Becky. 
Hi there. Um, so I'm the queen of like procrastination. Uh -huh. um, I always tell myself, well, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll do it, but then I never do it. So um, I really have to start treating this like a job because it is a job and um, I need to set like business hours. Um, I stay home with my kids, so I'm always like, yeah, when they're watching TV or they're doing something, but it never works out that way. Um, and I worked in a call center as well. I actually was a boss. And, um, but I was so used to people reaching out to me that I think that I'm having such a hard time reaching out to them mm -hmm. instead. So I kind of got to get out of my shell and um, turn it around because it's totally different than, you know, what I've been used to. So, um, and no excuses. Got to stop procrastination. Good. You know, one of the best things, one of the, one of the best things I could offer for you is find a success partner. Find somebody who can hold you to your ground because as awesome as we think we are, we procrastinate. Just that's just human nature. So find somebody who will hold you to your goals, hold you to your daily thing, and they check in with you daily and say, "Hey, did you do it yet?" So find find a success partner. Cool. All right, Andrea. Can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. So, um, similar to previous people, I struggle with inviting. So, I do all the other vital behaviors. <laughs> I'm a personal development junkie. I work out. I do Shakeology. Um, but I don't invite and <clears throat> I realize that's kind of like saying everything in my body's working but my heart's not beating and so I think I just I've trying to been working through what's holding me back and I really think it's a confidence sort of self-efficacy thing and so I've been doing a lot of books on tape about that um, but really I think I just what you said resonated I just have to do it and get yeah. more comfortable doing it and being rejected and um just going through the process hey boy i what a great and i'm just can i can i admit something to you guys i am a total introvert i know it doesn't come across like this right now because i actually love doing team calls but i i i hate talking to people i i'm such an introvert uh but one of the best things you can do andrew is go it's called go for no's i want you getting 20 no's a day until those no's mean nothing to you and you're like, okay, next. And not that we don't care about these people. It's just they don't affect you. Because right now we're so, we're so nervous about somebody saying no that we've offended them. Like, like no, we're not going to offend them. It's okay. Okay, it's all, it really is okay. And the best thing you can do is do it. Just do it. Okay. You need a success partner, too, to hold you down. So make sure you do it. Okay. Thank awesome. You. All right. Morses. I totally said that. Something's wrong with Sarah's sound. We don't know Sarah. what it is. Are you on your phone, Sarah? I know she's talking. But she's not showing muted and... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Hold on, let me try this. Okay. okay. While we're waiting for you... Why don't... Does that work? Hey, yeah. yeah. Now I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, well, for me, it's personal development. Um, I have um, some things in my past with uh, past bosses who have told me that I'm not worthy and I'm not good enough and I'm not worth what I'm paid. So for me, it's a huge mind thing. Uh, get out of my own way. So uh, personal development, I do double workouts and Shakeology. So I'm working hard at that um, and inviting more. I struggle with, you know, everybody's saying, oh, you look fantastic. And I just, you know, I share with them everything I'm doing. I'm doing samples. I'm doing everything. And I just struggle with people saying they want to do it. And then it's in the reverse. That's my, my thing. <laughs> it, you know, it, going back to the confidence thing, it, it could be a confidence thing. People can see your confidence in your inviting. People can say, look, um, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. People can, can it's in your inviting, in the con in just being confident in yourself. People want to purchase something from confident people because confidence works. 
You say, look, it worked for me, it'll work for you, I promise. And if not, there's a money back guarantee. I don't know if we use the money back guarantee enough in our inviting process. Look at it. This will work for you, I promise, or you can have your money back. It's, it's like I said, it's just, we just need to invite. And I, I, I realize there's a similar thing here going out through everybody because we're so new and we've never really invited people to purchase stuff and make money off of their purchase. It feels kind of strange. Everybody makes money from the stuff we purchase and we love telling people what we love. Just be confident in it. Thanks for sharing. All right, Stephanie. Okay, so I really like um, how you the five love languages. Um, I'm really into that, and I think that that was really cool because um, when I spend a lot of time trying to come up with ideas on how to reach people, um, it's, it's a I really reflect on like people's personalities. So I actually have like two copies of that book, and I'm gonna go back and reread it because I think that will help me like reach the people that I already know. Um, I'm, I haven't been a coach for very long and I've only done one round of 21 day fix and I had really good results, but, um, I'm having a lot of people that like ask me questions and don't commit. So I think it's, still, and I, and I'm watching videos every day and I'm like you know, jumping in on all the calls that I can. And then like, I'm reading everything I can and I'm really cramming, like trying to be like do as good as I can. So, um, it's kind of frustrating, but I liked how you said like you're still baking and yeah. coaches through multiple transformations. Like that was a good one for me to hear because um, and you know, so that I'll do that round and then more people will see that and then, you know, just keep going. Good. Great. I'm glad. Great comments. I mean, I, I, I wish I could give additional feedback, but you know exactly what needs to happen. I, I guess I'll say this, and this isn't directed towards you. This is directed towards every single person. <clears throat> we love surrounding ourselves. We love setting ourselves up for success. With We put so much around us that we put systems in place. We have all these books. We have these tapes. We have an awesome web page, but we don't do anything. We just need to do it. We just need to go out and do it. So right. great, great point. All right, Katie. Um, I really like the concept of doing a 30, 60, 90 plan. Um, and maybe even really writing that down of what were my expectations once I figured out the coaching thing <laughs> for 30, 60, 90, and then really starting to work with coaches who want to do this for a business rather than just for the discount. Um, and then Stephanie, you got me all thinking about the five love languages because I love that and I never really thought of putting those together on how we relate in our invites so amen amen man guys if you haven't read that book read that book because everybody is different what like with me is is time spent I, whatever that one is it's, it's quality time but that's what it is like we spend quality time together that I know that we we care about each other but for other somebody else it's put me in the limelight put a big old cute Facebook post about me that's how I know you care about me. It is those types of things. Awesome. Uh, Regina. Okay. Hello? Okay. Gotcha. Um, my biggest thing, because honestly, my, my night job takes up a, a lot of my time. So for me, it's more being consistent and um, being involved and getting other people involved. Because I have a lot of people come to me and say, Hey, I want to try this, do that, and my follow-up is kind of slow, and and, um, and I, I have a thing, I can get frustrated when people want something, and I'm like, okay, I explain it, and it's like, you really want this, you, you will want to do it. I don't understand how people don't want to do that, so, um, so sometimes my follow-up will fall off on that, so um, I'm still doing PD, I still do a lot of stuff on working with myself and like I said it's just time management putting away time to put to be to get more involved with everybody cool that's great I love that you know where your focus needs to be on and guys when people say no they're not saying no forever they're just saying no for now and one of the one of the things, the things that top coaches do is they invite these people monthly they're not annoying they reach out they say hey is it, this, is it, is it time now are you ready you ready to do this for yourself and eventually you'll say, yeah. So, 
All right, great. Uh, Christian with no video. I think she's sick. She just sent me a, a message okay. saying that That's fine. Kristen's very pregnant and she is blowing her nose. <laughs> That's, That's just fine. No problem. All right, our phone call, 4749. I don't know who that is. Hold on. That's me, Natasha. Sorry. Um, Hi. I just, <laughs> um, my biggest thing is just uh, consistency and just doing it. Um, I do a lot of PD. I work out. Um, but I guess my struggle is too is that I don't do a program. I'm a runner. Um, so I do try to incorporate the program as much as possible. I did, I did eight weeks of 22 um, minute hardcore. I did uh, the 21 day fix last summer. Um, but right now I'm really am focusing on trying to do a lot of uh, races coming up. So I'm just trying to find a way to incorporate the program. Um, I do drink my psychology every day, so I'm talking about that. I'm just trying to be creative um, to get people to see that the programs do work. Um, I just don't use them all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. But <laughs> just okay. me doing the work. Well, thank you for sharing that. Guys, you know, obviously there's a central theme coming through all of this, um, and it's just a matter of, of doing it. We all know what we need to do. Um, we just need to do it. And, I, and you know, I, this, this, you, guys, you guys are leaders in this business. You need to understand that. You are leaders in this industry. You, you can lead teams. You can give advice. You can build your confidence in this, and you can go out and, and change people's lives. We be very proud of who you work for and the company that you're involved with. This isn't some, some scam that's going out there and you have to be shy about it. No, we are helping people change lives. It's just a matter of doing it. Uh, Jill, so I'm so grateful that this is being recorded. Jillian's going to go back and she's going to write down everybody's goals, write down to everybody's area of improvement, and she's going to follow up because that's what leaders do, and she's going to do that. I want you guys to do it with yourself. Go out, find success partners. Go out, find an accountability partner. You just need to do it. Get uncomfortable. Get uncomfortable. Don't be comfortable. If you're just doing everything just mundane, I promise you, you're not going to see results. You guys can do this. I promise you can. There's so much out there for you in, in, in this business. Go get it. Um, I apologize. I've taken up too much time. I'll go ahead and get off the call, but thank you for letting me jump on. I, I love meeting with coaches. Um, I hope I get, we get to do this again, um, and I hope to see you guys at the top. I work with the three- to five-star coaches in the Northeast region. Uh, you know, Lacey Larson works with the Diamond to Two Stars. Reach out to her if you want to. Uh, we'd love to get to know you guys. And be proud of who you work for. We have a great company. So thank you. Let thank you so on. much, Kevin. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys for coming. I just want you to know that, like, showing up today shows me and yourself and Kevin, like, how serious you are about this business. So just know that just by being here, right? Showing up is 90, Woody Allen said something about that. I don't remember what it was, but anyway, um, have a great rest of your Wednesday and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.